Gold on it. Really. So uncircumcision and circumcision is going into the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Uncircumcision is considered to be the northern kingdom and circumcision is the southern kingdom. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Okay, so why were they called uncircumcision? He, he asked the question, I want a scripture. I want a scripture. That the reason why they were called uncircumcision First yes. Maccabees 41 and 49 through 49. 41? Yeah, First Maccabees 41, starting at 41 through 49. Anybody else? Oh, <laughs> a liar. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. First, uh, First Maccabees 1 through 41. Thank you. There's no such thing as First Maccabees 41 49. That's what I meant, sir. First Maccabees 1. That's definitely what I meant. I know what you meant, but right. you didn't say that. <laughs> I know what you meant. First Maccabees 600. Right, right. He's about to make up his own scriptures. <laughs> the hell? Okay. I'll start at verse 41. Book of First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. What is that called today? Raise your hands. Oh, uh, Abner. Uh, democracy. It's called democracy. Absolutely right. Read on. And everyone should leave his laws. Should what? Should leave his laws. What does that mean? Everyone should leave their laws. What does that mean? Your honey. That you go against what you were taught, or what you believe in, or someone else's belief, or someone else's doctrine. Yes, I want an example. Abner. Uh, going against the laws of Israel, the laws that we were given. It says, <clears throat> and everyone should leave his laws. Matthew. Um, assimilation. Exactly what it's called. Assimilation. Leave your customs, your heritage, and assimilate into the Greek Empire, following the Greekish laws. Read on. And everyone should leave his laws. Mm -hmm. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So all the heathen agreed, right? Yes, sir. We see that today. Yes, sir. The heathen come to America, and they leave their laws, their customs. Read. Yea. Many also of the Israelites, of who? Of the Israelites, consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. What is that called today? Your honor. You go to church on Sunday? Christianity. <laughs> yes, sir. So many of the Israelites consented, agreed to his religion. So. What is Esau's philosophy? What is it called? Um, what do you mean? What you said? What is it called? Christianity. Right? Democracy. Adam. Uh, I'm not sure. I, could, I can't pay for it. Did I speak in parables? <laughs> no one has to his philosophy is his doctrine is called religion. That's his religion. Y'all y'all see that? It says it right there. Yes, sir. Read on. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem. Unto where? To Jerusalem mm -hmm. and to the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. <laughs> what are those laws called? Strange, strange. laws. Hold this. Hold this. Go to uh, Esther 
in the Apocrypha. 13 and 3. 13 and 3. Esther chapter 13, verse 3. Now when I ask my counselors how this might be brought to pass, a man that is excellent, excelled in wisdom among us, and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity, and had an honor, had the honor of the second place in the kingdom, mm -hmm. declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there were scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to the all nations. What does that mean? They could, what does that mean? Laws that were contrary to all nations. Yohanan. We went at, our laws were uh, were opposite of their laws that were uh, different from what everyone else believed in. Correct. Correct. Read on. Yeah, there's more to it. Um, Adam. Our laws went against the, everything they were telling their people to do. True. There's something else, though. I just looked at it. There's something else. Malkiel. Um, in their eyes, our laws, our way of life is evil compared to them. Right, Melissa? Yes, true. Something else. Anybody else? Yeah, read, it's, read the scripture again. Verse 4. Verse 4. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there were scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. So our laws are contrary or in opposition to all nations. Which means what? We are not to unite with these other nations. Our laws itself tells you we're in opposition of all nations. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Read on. And continually despise the commandments of king. Did what? Continually despise the commandments of king. What does that mean? Uh, after. <laughs> Meaning that the laws that we had were in opposition to what the, the other nations wanted. Or the oh, other we just said that. Matthew. Um, so when it says continue to despise, I mean, we were not dealing with it. Whatever, whatever laws they came up with, we wouldn't conform to it. We were saying strong to our laws and our heritage. True something else. Adam. Our laws showed that we had some form of hatred towards their king. No. No one knows? Okay. It says that, uh, and continually despise the commandments of kings. We hated their customs, their ways, their laws. It's despise the commandments of kings. You got something? Um, mainly, we, we are enemies of the state, pretty much. That, that's exactly what it's saying. It said we're a malicious people that are contrary to the laws that our king has set up. We are enemies in their eyes. Right? So it's not just, oh, we had other laws and we hated. No, we're enemies to them. Right? That's why he said malicious people when we weren't. We were just keeping the laws of God. Right? Read on. And continually despise the commandments of kings, so as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. What does that mean? Yes. It means that if if they can continue to get us to follow their customs, our people won't come back together and the king won't return and we won't have the kingdom. Say that again. If, if we continue to keep their customs and did not follow the law, statutes, and commandments, we will, our people, the northern and southern kingdom wouldn't come back together, find out who they are, so we can't get the kingdom. Oh, no, no. Uh, Esther 13 and 4. 
Yes. They were saying that because of us keeping our laws, statutes, and commandments, it is stopping the other kingdoms of the heathen from coming together. No. No? Good. All right. It says, uh, and continually despise the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. Um, read, read that script, the whole scripture again for me, though. Declaring unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually, continually despised the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So the whole goal was to have all kingdoms one belief. Their goal was to unite everybody into one God. But they said because the Israelites have these laws that's stopping to assimilate everybody into the same belief. Y'all got it? Yes sir. Yes sir. We don't Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. What? In opposition unto all men, mm. deferring, deferring in the strange manner of their laws and evil effect to our state, Damn. working all the mischief they can, that our kingdom may be may not be firmly established. So. How do the heathen see our laws? Why is the same brothers raising their hands? Mordecai. The other kingdom see our laws. Oh, one more. Uh, and against their motives and their goals, they want to achieve complete opposite. Okay. The water. Yes, they are, but Badrio. They see that as that well, the more we keep our, our law touches the more that they're down Okay. All right. Um what's the difference in religion and the laws? What's the difference? Samuel, little Samuel. Say again. They teach to go against God's That's true. That's very true. Something else. Milton. It works. The what? It works. What do you mean? Um, put it in action and what you believe. Okay. Um, the, everybody understand that God's commandments is in total opposition of society. Yes, sir. So when you try to get along what is that statement? Go along to get along? Yeah. You're sacrificing, you're compromising God's laws. Now, I'm not talking about using wisdom. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're afraid and scared of somebody seeing you keeping these commandments. Because these commandments, these laws, this Bible is against Esau's kingdom, every other kingdom. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Go back to First Maccabees. So our laws, our customs are in opposition to everybody else on this planet, except if you're an Israelite. Now, having said that, if you compromise the scriptures, what is that saying about you? Johanna. That you're going along to get along. No, I just said that. I'll repeat what I said. <laughs> that, that you're weak, basically. You're weak. Huh? You're weak. Okay, something else. The water. Mm. Mm. Can you? Can you live a double life? Yes or no? No. You sure? Because some are, are living a double life. They got one foot in, one foot out. Either you're all the way in or you're all the way out. There's no in between. Either you're hot or cold. 
So understand that the heathen know that we are in opposition to all of them. Now, 1 Maccabees 1 and verse 44. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they shall follow the strange laws of the land. Read. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath mm. and the festival day. So when you are not keeping the Sabbath, guess who you are in agreement with? The devil. Because we were forced to profane the Sabbath back then. Now we have a, we can keep the Sabbath now, right? But there's those that choose not to. Read. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Read. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols mm. and sacrifice swine's flesh. Do what? Sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. So realize that in these temples, in our temple, they set up these wicked sacrifices. Sacrificing swine's flesh. They were eating swine's flesh. And you go to the church and they got pork sandwiches. Uh, it said it set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. What you see in the church? Why Jesus? There's no difference. Uh, read, read on. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Leave what? Leave their children uncircumcised. How many have recently had boys, gave birth to boys, and the hospitals say or try to convince you to not get them circumcised? You're on it. What do they tell you? Stand up. One, they tell me that it was going to cost, but then once we tell them we had insurance or they understood we had insurance and we found the people to take the insurance, and they said it was, it was, uh, how did they say, it would hurt him? Mm -hmm. It would, uh, what is the other word? They said it was uh, not clean also as hmm. far as, yeah. So you'll, you'll see what's going on? Now when our children were born, when he was born, we weren't told that. We had him circumcised. My other son, we had him circumcised. But you'll see what's going on? They're trying to persuade you not to circumcise your boys. As the law says, they should be circumcised. Um, read 48 again. Read 48. That they should leave also their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable mm. with all manner of uncleanliness. A what? Uncleanliness. So not being circumcised makes you what? Unclean. Unclean. Read. And, uh, and profanation. Mm -hmm. Read. To, to the end that they might forget the law. They what? Might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Read. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he shall, he said, he should die. He should what? He should die. So they were putting our children to death. There's a second Maccabees 6. We're not going to go there tonight. But they were killing our children. This woman, she had a son that was still breastfeeding, I think another one, and they threw him down off of the tower. Read that story. Read that history. There's another woman who has seven sons. They killed all of them. For keeping the law in front of her, right? That's that's I'm telling you, our forefathers and foremothers they had a spirit on them that we don't have today. How many of our women today were willing to die for this truth and watch their children be killed in front of them? You don't know what you're into. Um, go back to Ephesians. So I went through that just to show you the uncircumcision. Uh, Ephesians 2 and read verse 11 again. Wherefore remember that being in times past Gentiles in the flesh 
who are called uncircumcised. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says, wherefore remember that in being times past Gentiles, can a real Gentile in times past change from being a Gentile? No, no. Don't see the foolishness of Christianity? Yes, sir. It says, wherefore remember that in ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Why? Because we were following Gentile customs. Following their laws. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Read on. Who are called of circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. So you, you understand why they were called uncircumcision? You, you understand? Yes. Okay. Read on. That at that time ye were without Christ. You were what? Without Christ. Mm hmm. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. And without God in this world. Wow. I'm saying a lot right there. That at that time you were without Christ. Ye being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. That alone right there, is that talking about other nations? No. The covenants of promise were given to who? According to what? I want a scripture. Malchio. Uh, Romans 9 and 4. Let's get it. Start at verse 3. Covenants of promise. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, for my who? My brethren, my brothers, my kinsmen, my kinfolk, according to the flesh. According what? To the flesh. What is that saying? According to the flesh, not you. What is that saying, Johanna? His people. Milton. Circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> brothers and circumcision. Abner. According to the flesh, uh, the same. Um, <laughs> Brother fell off the horse, broke his neck. I'll give it to y'all. There is no such thing as spiritual Israel. Yes, sir. You are Israel by blood, yes, sir. according to the flesh. So if somebody comes to you and says spiritual Israel, bang him over the head with this one. Yes. I, my cousin met a rabbi who said, well, I'm a spiritual Israel. And he looked at him and said, yeah, well, I'm spiritually Chinese. Right, right, right. Can you be spiritually Chinese? That, right, that's an excellent point. Uh, read on. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Israelites. Mm -hmm. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant. And the what? And the covenant. Old covenant and new covenant. Belong to the and the giving giving of the law given to the Israelites and the service of God given to the Israelites and the promise and the what the promise now go back to Ephesians two and twelve Ephesians chapter two verse twelve that at time that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the co covenants of promise all right hold on a minute. Go to Hosea 8 and 4. The book of Hosea, chapter 8, verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. What is that talking about? What is that talking about? What is that talking Yes, Mordecai. Are talking about idolatry? Yeah, but specifically. No one knows. Okay. Go to 1 Kings 12. And start at verse 25.
First Kings 12 and 25. First Kings chapter 12, verse 25. Then Jeroboam. Jer um, Jer Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim. Where? Mount Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. 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 Then Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the king return to the house of David. Mm -hmm. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people then again then turn. Yeah, read it again. Then shall the heart of the people turn again unto their Lord, even Rehoboam. Unto Rehoboam. Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me. And go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So, he was afraid that the the people would go under Rehoboam, the king over the southern kingdom. There's a split. The split happened before this, but there's a split. This is part of the split. Read on. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. He did what? Made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. What happened here? You, uh, you, you, honey. The northern kingdom king turned uh, them away from gods and had them, had them worshiping different gods, idols. Correct. But, yeah, in its basic form, yes. So he turned the northern kingdom to idolatry. Now, if you look at today, the northern kingdom is still in the midst of idolatry. The major religion that they're in is Catholicism, where they have idols. Everything to them is an idol. Um, this microphone stands looks like Jesus, Jesus Christ, so I'm going to worship him. My toast looks like Jesus. Right, my toast looks like Jesus. Come on, bro. <laughs> heavy, heavy idolatry. Santa Maria. Guadalupe. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Now, Judah is also in the midst of idolatry. Caesar Borgia. Don't get it mistaken, because we went off too. Well, the Northern Kingdom just went into madness. Um, read, read on. Verse 30. Verse 30? Yeah, just verse 30. And this thing became a sin. A what? Became a sin mm -hmm. for the people. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Read. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jerome. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is going to have to be a, a two-part class because we're not going to have time. What happened here? In verse 31. Yes. Um, uh, he went against uh, the priesthood, made priests that weren't qualified at all to uh, be priests. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, he, just, he set up his own temple, his own gods, basically trying to make his own church. Yeah. He went against the order that God gave us. Exactly. He went to the, against the order. The, what was the order? That the Levites were to be the priests of Israel. Correct. So he tried to set up his own priests. It says, uh, what kind of men were these? Of the lowest, made priests of the lowest of the people. We see that today. Yes, sir. Um, that's, that's all I'm on that. Go to, back to Ephesians. Oh, I hate flying through classes. Read 12 again. Verse 12, chapter 2. 2, verse 12. 2, verse 12. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So what were we called? What were we called? We were 
call it alien. What were we called? No. Strangers. strangers. <coughs> Israel was also known as strangers. We were known as strangers. We were known as heathen, Gentiles, Greeks. Y'all, you understand? Yes, sir. Read on. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, who ye who sometimes were far off. What does that mean? Far off. I want a scripture. I want a scripture. Everybody's come out. Go to Daniel 97. Daniel 97. Daniel chapter 9, verse 7. O Lord, righteousness belong unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at, as at this day to the men of Judah. Oh, hold on, confusion of faces. Uh, what does that mean, Goliath? I can't hear you. It means uh, that they was uh, they was causing confusion. No, they hiding behind. Confusion of faces means we didn't know who we are. According to Israel, we didn't know our nationality. Okay, I I, I like that. Expound more on that. Today. Today we call ourselves. Uh, Christians instead of our uh, God-given name is Judah, um, Ephraim. All right. But we call ourselves everything other than what God calls okay. us. That's good. Uh, am I Egyptian? Am I Moorish American? Am I Islam? Another thing too is this hang up in Israel and I'm going to smash it today. North, especially about the Northern Kingdom. Well, he doesn't look Negro. Right. So he, and he looks like a Spaniard, so he's not Israel. That spirit has to stop. I'm going to digress for a minute. This has to be multi, multi part class. Um, give me Hosea. Seven and eight. If you don't look Negro, you're not an Israelite. Really? Really? The book of Hosea, chapter 7, verse 8. Ephraim had mixed himself among the people. Mm -hmm. Ephraim is a cake not turned. What does that mean? Ephraim is a cake not turned. Adam. When you cook a cake, the bottom is always darker than the top. Very so good. It's like saying there, the top half of the cake, and Judah's the bottom half. No, not necessarily. No, you just messed up. You just messed up. <laughs> You just messed so up. We burnt now. Right, right. What the hell? <laughs> Ephraim is going to be multicolored. One, that one may be dark, one may be light, but they're the same people. Exactly. You you understand that? Because if you go to a certain region in Mexico, well, they're considered Afro-Mexican. They're dark as he is. Then you go to other regions in Mexico, and they're light. There's still is a car. You go to Cuba, you have really light Cubans who are not Spaniard. Then you have really dark Cubans. You understand? Yes, sir. Ephraim or the, the Northern Kingdom is like a cake not turned. Some are light, some are dark. Y'all see the captains that were here a few weeks ago? Yes, sir. They're both Ephraim, really light. Who knows Officer Abiel from New York? Really dark, dark as you. He's Ephraim. Same tribe. Cake not turned, because they mix themselves among the people. Now, does the same hold true for Judah, Southern Kingdom? Yes, sir. Also, Amariah, who was also here, he's from the tribe of Levi. He's light as Milton. He looks, he looks Northern Kingdom. You can't go by looks. Get out of that spirit. Oh, he don't look Negro. He can't be an Israelite. Bob Marley 
looks Negro. He's an Edomite. Mariah Carey, she's crazy, but Mariah Carey is from the tribe of Judah. Ben D. Yes, got red hair. Look like an Irishman. That's absolutely correct, Johanna. Not only the color, but the texture of our hair also. People say, oh, your hair ain't uh, kinky. Kinky, enough. right. It can't be from Judah. Well, what about Damn. Judite women who have straight hair? They're not an Israelite because they have straight hair? No. That's madness. First of all, how many mothers did Israel have? <coughs> yes. Five. So, with five different mothers, are all the children going to look the same? No, sir. But you got this spirit. Plus the, the mixing. Huh? Plus the mixing. The mixing, yes. Plus, so five different mothers, plus y'all mixing them up the nation. Did we mix among the nations on uh, Southern Kingdom? We have. Yes. Yes. There's an article that came out about, uh, what was the country was that? Iran? Is it Iran? There's Israelites in, in Iran, Yemen, Tunisia. Well, I want to get this. Go to Hosea 1. I'm digressing a little bit, but 1 in 10. Book of Hosea, oh, sorry. I'm just <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Hosea 1 and 10. The book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. What does that mean? Uh... <clears throat> Nate. That means that there is an unaccountable amount of Israelites. You can't put a number on us. You can't count the sands of the sea, so you can't count us. Right, there's, that's why that census is a joke. There's no end to us. You have more chance of being Israel than not being Israel. Right. <laughs> Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. So, especially when we were on the Strip. Now, on the Strip, we get people from all over the world. And at one time, the order was only give flyers to Israelites. Until this one night, somebody walked up to me, looked like a white man. And we were told to ask them who their father is. He said, my father's Cuban. Spaniard or Indian? No, I'm a Cuban. He looked like a white man. You can't go by looks. He was an Israelite. But now we get flyers to everybody. Why? Exactly. Give it to them all, even if you give it to a heathen. We give it to Edomites. You want to fly? Go ahead. Here. And you know what Edomites will do? Some Edomites? What do you think they will do? As you go. What do you think when we get flyers to Edomites? What do you think some Edomites will do? No. Have a seat. You're on it. Actually take the time and read it? No. Adam. Give it back? No. Uh, Elijah. They won't read it and do a research to see what we... See what we I'll give it to you. They'll give it to a so-called Negro. I've seen it happen. There's Edomites that, come, that have come to the camp and said, I gave this flyer to my friend who is African-American. You understand? Yes, sir. Be very mindful. Give it to them. If they eat a mite, I don't care. Give it to them. Give them the flyer. Is it going to hurt you? No. It's a few cents. There's no point of making it a big deal. Right. Holding flyers. Yeah. Like, why are you on Now you cause a huge commotion when you just give them the flyer. They use that to provoke you. Yes. Just give them the flyer. But get out of the spirit of if you don't look Negro, you're not an Israelite. Because there's going to come a day when we're going to have people walking through that door or, Lord's will, the new school door. Either way, that look, that don't look Jake. And y'all going to, some of y'all going to come out of the spirit.
Guess what? You guess what we're gonna tell you? Shalom. Get out. Because it's not of, up to us to determine whether they're Israel or not. The angels are gonna hash it out when they come back. Let the wheat grow up with the tear. You understand? Yes, sir. But do not go around. He don't look Israel. She don't look Israel. You the devil. You the devil. Because even amongst Jay, Judah, we have different looks. Yes, sir. We gotta stop that spirit. We went on a flying mission, and this Jake bugged out because of Milton. Bugged out. Well, he, he looked Spaniard. Okay. He went off into madness. And I just took it to the very basic. You know you Israel? Yeah, I know I'm Israel. Where your friends is at? And he bugged out. But the point is, stop that spirit. It's not going to be allowed in here. It won't be allowed. Let the let Christ and the angels hash it out when they return. Like they're gonna get away. <laughs> they can't hide. Can't hide. Now you understand? Yes, sir. All right, go back to Ephesians. I digress. But I had to had to get that out. Well, they don't look Negro. Okay. You don't right. look Negro. Right. Look you look like ham. Right. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, and, and and that too. Leadership went over to Africa, and other other Israelite camps bugged the hell out. Now they go going and teaching Africans. Mm. Yeah. We got to understand, whatever region our people have been scattered in, they're going to have um, features of those specific nations, right? Like the ones in Iran. Mm -hmm. They have Iran, Iranian features, but you can still tell that they, they're Israelites. Yeah. You can tell. But they have Iranian features or East Indian features or what have you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that, that's a good point. Because we have Israelites in the Philippines. China. South Korea. What you gonna do when somebody looks like Moab walks through that door? <laughs> You'll call him a wash pot? Is that what I'm gonna do? Oh, okay. You don't have to hold me back. <laughs> right, just 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 warning. Go back to Ephesians 2 and 13. Yes. The Vietnam War. Huh? The Vietnam War. A lot of our men was over there. Bring, say that again. He said the Vietnam War. A lot of our men went over there. And if you know about the Vietnam War, yeah, you know I, what that happened. Yeah. Well, my uncles was over there, and there's many Jake babies over there. They got Cambodians that's darker than Brother Adriel. They Israel. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Don't get confounded by the looks. It's not about how you look. It's not about skin color. It's about your bloodline. And that DNA test is another thing too. Somebody came to me and said, "Well, I took a DNA test and it says I'm from this remote tribe in Africa." Okay, good. Take it again, and I want to see what the results are. Because every time you take the DNA test, you get a different result. Hmm? Yeah, right. Now they bug out. I'm from Scotland. I'm Scottish. <laughs> but what about the, the African tribe? Right, right. You understand? Um, Ephesians 3, 2, I'm sorry, and verse 13 again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye some... Read it right. Yes, sir. But now in Christ Jesus... Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Because what? We're scattered. We mix ourselves with the people. We follow their customs. Everybody understand? Yes, Read on. For he is our peace mm. who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition. What does queens. that mean? That's heavy, heavy new scripture. What does that mean? Yes. We're going to cut it short in two minutes. Um, the hatred that's between northern and southern kingdoms, you know. I know growing up out here in Vegas, the Hispanics, they, they see us as enemies. Same thing with the blacks. We see the Hispanics as enemies. 
But through Christ, us realize that we're Israel, we're the same people. We have peace now. That that wall between us, the separation, was torn down. Absolutely correct. Give me Zechariah 11 and 14. Absolutely correct. Uh, we were at camp on uh, Fremont Street, and we had Northern Kingdom brother in the camp at that time. And a Jake walked up from L.A. He was, he got out of prison. I think he just got out of prison and bugged the hell out. I mean, the, he had the devil on him because we had Northern Kingdom in the camp. He wanted to bang with him. The way of life in California. Yes, he wanted to bang with the brother, Northern Kingdom brother. Right, bro. Just, we just had to ignore that brother, the Jake. We had to ignore him because he really wanted to bang. Everybody know bang, when I say bang, you know what I mean? Fight. Fight, fight yes, fight. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> he wanted to fight the Nordic King brother. All right, Zechariah eleven fourteen. Zechariah eleven fourteen. Then I cut asunder my other other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. To break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Israel is also considered the Northern Kingdom. Judah represents the southern kingdom. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. So sometimes when you see Israel, it's talking about the northern kingdom. All right? Uh, there's another scripture I want. Where it says... Hold on a minute. There's another scripture. Uh, no, I got it. It's Isaiah 11 and 13. Isaiah 11 and 13. This is the last scripture. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 13. The envy of also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversary of Judah shall be cut off. Mm -hmm. And Judy, Judah, Judy. Shall not, Judah <laughs> shall not vex Ephraim. <laughs> Read it again. Right, Judy. Come on, you put some respect on that name. Right. Talking about Judah. Verse 13. The envy of Ephraim shall not depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. That's right. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Because there's right now there's division between the kingdoms. Still, to this day. But when Christ returns, he's going to bring peace between the two kingdoms, making them one again. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Um, we're going to go further, deeper into this, but this is just to touch on, the, do you understand uncircumcision and circumcision to this point? I believe I do. Sure? Who's uncircumcision? Uncircumcision was mainly the northern kingdom. Stand up. Uncircumcision was considered the northern kingdom, but also some of uh, the southern kingdom also, and that was they were keeping the Gentiles' laws, the Greeks. Who's circumcision? The what? southern kingdom, because they were raised in our law, in God's law. Okay. All right, you cleaned it up. <laughs> what the hell? All right. Uh, we're going to, Lord's will, do more of these classes. Uh, make sure to take notes. If you're not taking notes, you're not in the spirit and you won't learn. Are you understand? Yes, sir. So. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, 
please make sure to subscribe to this join IUIC chat to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.